Religious apologists often use the argument from probability to assert that a creator God must exist because a life-supporting universe is too improbable. This is a fallacious argument. Extremely improbable events occur every day, everywhere. In fact, in 1957, Hugh Everett formulated the many worlds interpretation of quantum theory, which resolves all of the correlation paradoxes, like Schrodinger's cat, and asserts that everything that can happen, no matter how improbable, will happen. But we'll get back to physics later. For now, let's look at the mundane nature of the improbable. A mosquito landed on my arm today. Now everyone take out your slide rule and calculate the chance that one particular mosquito in one particular city on one particular day would land on my particular arm. It doesn't take a mathematician to know that the chance is highly improbable. Yet it happened. Likewise, the probability of one particular sperm cell among the billions that your father has produced in his lifetime would fertilize one particular egg in your particular mother to become particularly you is astronomically small. Yet, here you are. We could cite example after example of highly improbable events that occur every second of every day, which serves to illustrate that when one retroactively calculates the odds of any event under the assumption that its current state is the result of intention or design, everything becomes almost infinitely improbable. The cosmic origin and history of every oxygen atom you've ever inhaled, every photon that lights your vision, every subatomic particle in the universe is, by a standard of intentionality, virtually impossible. Evolution deniers typically employ the probability argument by attacking a straw man of their own creation. The assertion that evolution is random chance. Please, get this straight. Evolution is not random. While chance may play a part in the evolutionary process, the driving mechanism of evolution, natural selection, is not random. This basic principle should have been part of any high school biology curriculum, but for the sake of any homeschooled creationists watching this video, here's a couple of illustrations. And I'll try to speak slowly. Take, for example, the random toss of a die. The chance that it will turn up a one is one in six. Simple. If we roll two dice, the chance that they will both turn up ones is one in 36. Three dice, one in 216, and so on. That is pure random chance. However, natural selection functions more like this. If we roll the dice and a one turns up, we select that die and only re-roll those dice that did not turn up ones. So for each die, on each roll, there's always a 1 in 6 chance of a 1. And since that 1 is then selected out of the mix, the chance of getting all 1s becomes much greater. Or take another example. You have a change jar on your nightstand. Each night, you put a random assortment of coins into the jar. But each morning, you select out only the silver coins. Over time, that jar would become filled with nearly all copper. This is similar to the way natural selection acts on genetic variation. Traits that are advantageous to the survival and reproduction of a population, the pennies, are passed on. Detrimental mutations, the silver coins, are generally removed from the gene pool by natural selection. So while mutation may be random, natural selection is not. 
So you can see, not only is the improbability of an event irrelevant to whether or not it can or will happen, but additionally, the improbability of evolutionary change is actually far lower than creotards will admit. Another argument from probability has to do with the fine-tuning of the universe. This is pure anthropocentric tautology. If the fundamental parameters of the universe were such that chemical bonding was unstable and stars couldn't form, no one would be here to make the claim that the universe is fine-tuned. Besides, particle physicist Victor Stenger and astrophysicist Fred Adams have both simulated several universes with varied parameters which are stable and could theoretically support life. Stenger states, We have no reason to believe that our kind of carbon-based life is all that's possible. Furthermore, modern cosmology indicates that multiple universes may exist with different constants and laws of physics. So, it's not surprising that we live in the one suited for us. The universe is not fine-tuned to life. Life is fine-tuned to the universe. In the grand design, Stephen Hawking states, In theory, has solutions that allow for many different internal spaces, perhaps as many as 10 to the 500th, which means 10 to the 500th different universes, each with its own laws. To get an idea how many that is, think about this, if some being could analyze the laws predicted for each of those universes in just one millisecond and started working on it at the Big Bang, at present that being would have studied 10 to the 20th of them. And that's without coffee breaks. But if you still think human life is just too improbable without invoking your invisible super friend, air, 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 air.